guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're here on the set of the new Crows movie, and guess what? We also have some big full-size SUV action for you. This is it. This is the refresh updated 2022 Infiniti QX80, and guess what? We got the top trim, the sensory trim. But before we get into this super-size, super-luxe SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Infiniti. Not Infiniti with a Y, because that would be all about Buzz Lightyear. This is Infiniti with an I. Has been around since 1989. That premium brand from Nissan. And you know what? They're slowly doing the same thing that their parent brand is doing, Nissan. They're having a bit of a renaissance. Now, we've already brought to you the totally redesigned QX60, which is one size smaller than this one. But with this QX80, it may not be a total redesign, but they've made some big changes, especially when it comes to the interior. Now, when it comes to full-size luxury SUVs, it's like Baskin Robbins 31 flavors. You got so many different brands bringing so many different variations of what luxury SUV means on the full-size capacity. So what I wanna find out is, I wanna pinpoint on one. I wanna hone in on one. I wanna focus in on one of the competitors, the mighty Cadillac Escalade. It's become a, a dream vehicle for a lot of different people putting posters up on their walls of an SUV as kids. I was all about Lamborghini Countach's and Ferrari Testarossa's, but hey, to each their own. So let's go ahead, let's find out what the heck are the changes on this Infiniti QX80 and is this the better luxury SUV at the end of the day to be driving on road and yes, even off road? Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, I love this color. This metallic gray is like a signature color for Infinity because it fits it so well. At the front of the business, you're getting the LED action. What do I mean by that? You're getting LED daytime running lamps, turn singles, and LED, LED projector beam headlights. As we work our way down, what do we have? We have more exterior lighting, but we got a little bit of a zonk. We have some faux vents. I wish they would have made those functional side air curtains. You'd think that that would actually help with the aerodynamic efficiency of the large front end on this vehicle. Now you do have some chrome. Luxury means still to this day, some bright shiny chrome finish. Starts in the lower corner. And as we come across that center grill, you're getting a whole mouthful. Not only on the Infinity badge, all the way around the perimeter. I actually really dig the grills on the different Infinity brands. Forward-facing camera, and what I like about the grills, they actually take this, this metallic gray design from the ocean. And it seems that in the luxury SUV crowd, it's all about big grills. The Escalade has a massive grill. The Navigator, the BMW X7. This one, though, it's large, but it actually looks sexy. And I really like that, and definitely when comparing it to the Escalade's grill, I really like this grill a lot more. Now, working your way down, more chrome, flat black with some functionality. And I like the way they kind of tweaked the underside of the front fascia on the low end. You got plenty of ground clearance. And remember, this is not all wheel drive. This is four by four capability. Let's ahead, go ahead and hop up on the hood. Nice rise, starts on the chrome trim, flows into the hood, and then evaporates. Just like the water on a hot Florida summer day. Other rises are just gonna come up and go towards the windshield. And one thing that's unique about Infiniti style, especially on this supersize SUV, is from behind the wheel, it actually has a little bit of a curve to it on both sides. So I like to see that kind of brand identifier from when you're sitting behind the wheel and definitely does not seem as large as an Escalade when you're driving it. Now, when you come around the bend, what are we working with? We got some massive wheels on this thing. These are 20, two-inch wheels, multi-spoke design. I like the way it's got a nice, darker, polished aluminum finish. You'll notice behind there the large, fully ventilated rotors, nice size calipers. And when we're talking about wheels, obviously wheels are gonna really be unique to everybody's personality, but I'm really digging this style over the Escalade. I like the 275 on the width and a meaty 50 series sidewall. And the fact that everything's painted makes me sleep better at night knowing that a luxury SUV does not have any flat black around the fender openings. Now, coming down the rest of the fender, we do have functional side vents. 
with the chrome finish, it would have been nice if they were able to take the V8 badge and integrate it into this side feature. Not only because it's functional, but because guess what? We got naturally aspirated V8 power. Chrome finish on the mirror caps. We got 360 degree cameras. I think it's so smart on a large SUV, definitely to black out the A pillar. Remember, A, B, C, D, you work your way down so the A pillar is blacked out. Kind of makes it not look so top heavy. You got that classic Japanese style flat roof up top with the super sized roof rails that are raised up perfectly and crossbars. What I like about the raised roof rail rather than the flush mount ones is that when you're doing your you're traveling and you got the tie downs, it's easier to get those tie downs located and all sealed up instead of having the, the flat surface close finish. Now you do have stationary running boards and I have to admit they integrate them very cleanly into the body lines and it gives it that unique Japanese 4x4 off-road vehicle look but in a luxury wrapper. Chrome on the door handle, some shiny chrome bit both top and bottom. Look at the size of this rear glass for the rear seat passage. Remember, just like the Escalade, you are gonna get three row capability. And when we spin around the back here, what are we working with? We got a stubby, short, low roof spoiler. You do have the wiper back here. We're gonna have to zonk that, get rid of that, put that up here. I do like the way the glass kind of curves around. Allows more light, better visibility. You got your LED taillights the QX80 badge, chrome going all the way across, and so smart to just drop the infinity name right in the center there. Even the brushed aluminum on the bumper. I wish I had my sunglasses because it's blinding me, but it looks good. Four wheel drive badge, and then we're gonna drop it like it's hot. All the way down to the bottom. The one thing I like about the Escalade, it's got some finished exhaust. I wish there was some finished exhaust back here, but you do have that cover for the towing capability, but this thing is large and in charge. I said V8, let's go pop the hood and see what kind of power we're looking at. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hydraulic hood struts. Underneath the hood, very tasteful engine cover. I actually like this engine cover better than the one in the Cadillac Escalade. It's got the V8 badge prominently displayed, the Infinity badge, but what is underneath that cover? You're looking at a 5.3 liter, naturally aspirated V8, 400 horsepower, 413 pound-feet of torque. Now it does have a seven-speed automatic. And if you're comparing this to the Escalade, the Escalade you can get with the 6.2, which has 460 horsepower. But you know what? You're gonna be surprised by the acceleration. The Escalade also does have the 10-speed automatic, but zero to 60 in this beast is 5.8 seconds. Top speed, 155 miles an hour. The vehicle weighs 5,813 pounds and can tow up to 8,500 pounds. MPGs, you might wanna plug your ears if, uh, if you're a Prius owner. It's uh, 13 in the city, 19 on the highway. But you know what? We got V8 power. Let's find out if we have V8 growl. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire up this QX80 sensory and see how it affects our senses. All right, guys, here we are inside the refresh, updated, changed up 2022 Infinity QX80 sensory trim. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, it seems like alphabet soup with these luxury SUVs, the QX80, the Navigator, the Escalade, the X7, the list goes on and on, the Grand Wagoneer. I'm a little curious by this QX80. I know that Infinities are bulletproof engine wise. How much is this one? So MSRP with this being a sensory trim is around $89,000. Let's see what you get for the money and let's see what's different to the door panels. I like what they've done with the two-tone color style. You got that tan with the beautiful stitch work. I mean, look at that center section, stitching 
right on needlepoint. Absolutely love it. You got that dark wood finish up top. My only thing with that is I wish they would have went with a flat, real open pour wood. That would have been the cherry on top of the door panel there. But you got the optional Bose sound system with those beautiful aluminum speaker grill covers and a door pocket size that's large enough for two, not one, but two Renaissance Festival, since Infinity's having a Renaissance, Renaissance Festival style turkey legs and a bottle of mead to wash it down. Now, when you go from the door panel to the dash, you're getting that same style. The good news is it's soft touch. The open pour wood would have been, would have been sold for somebody looking at this vehicle, but still tasteful. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm digging the style on the stitching though, especially the contrast stitching up there. And then look what we got. More of that tan, all soft touch with the stitching. And this is all new for 2022. That's a 12.3 inch infotainment system, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Now I know we're comparing this to the Escalade, it comes up short on size. I know some of you guys have dealt with that from time to time, but it's not necessarily how big the screen is, but how you use it. And I really feel like this new system that they've done with the screen and everything is very intuitive. It is a touch screen, which is great. Another nice little feature is you could do uh, night mode. So if you don't want that bright screen like this, then you could put it right into night mode. Still very, very easy to utilize, which is great. And then I'm going to go right back to that. Here's another nice feature. You want forward-facing camera? All you got to do is hit a button on the center console. There's our forward-facing camera. Now the Zonk is, I wish that that visual image was a little bit larger, but you do have trajectory and you do have the 360 cam. There's just a lot of dead space over on the right-hand side. I go back to menu and now you got your Sirius XM and watch this. We go into info. I hope you're a movie buff. I love going to the movies. You hit SXM movie listings, and now you can go right to current movies and pick up whatever you need to find out, and then it's gonna find the theaters for you. So very, very easy to navigate through. And then, like I said, having the 12.3 inch display, the navigation so much nicer. I'm gonna put it into reverse. There's our backup camera. Same thing as the forward facing camera, just shooting out the back. I just wish it was a little bit larger, but you could change the view. We can see those beautiful 2022 2022. Well, yeah, 2022, 22 inch wheels. Say that 20 times fast. See what I did there? And then it brings you right back and then you want map. Boom. Nice. A little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. I like the way they have actual knobs for tuning and volume. AC vents, dual climate control, heated seats, ventilated seats, push button start. Everything is real easy to get to. There's some more of that wood finish. Open up the door. What do we got? 12 volt and we got wireless charging. So you got wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and wireless charging, USB-C, USB, and then this thing is very rugged off-road capability-wise. So you have your nice aluminum style knob where you could go from auto to four high to four low, tow mode and snow mode. Shut the traction control off. This nicely stitched leather shifter here is going to control the seven-speed automatic. We have our direct drive control knob, and there was that camera button that I hit to immediately get the forward-facing camera. Two cup holders, nicely placed, close the door. Here's the key fob. This is where it comes up a little short compared to the Escalade, but it does have remote start, which is really nice. And it is smaller, so I guess if you don't want something to, you know, poke you in your groin, this is better. Just make sure that this pointy end is pointed away from your groin area. Don't ask me how I know that. You do have stitching. You do have some nice popping. Piping. The popping of the piping is really placed well. That's another little tongue twister for you. Open it up. Are you ready? One, two, three. <gasps> yes, you have your Twinkie tray for you and your passenger. And then you got the rest of the room to fit a whole box of Twinkies. And you got felt lining so you don't have to worry about scratching your Twinkie. Close it up. Seats, the leather, the softness, the diamond pleated stitching full electric assist, and these seats are massive. Very, very comfortable, and you get a standard size sunroof, which is gonna be a Zonk. I would like a panoramic sunroof, especially if we're comparing it to the Escalade, but watch this. 
just like the Escalade, we got the digital rear view mirror. So that's another nice addition for 2022. But why don't you get your butt over here, get your abacus since we're spitting a lot of numbers, a lot of letters, and I wanna show you behind the business end of this Infiniti QX80. All right guys, business time. You got two memory seat settings. I do like the aluminum sill plate with the Infiniti name that lights up LED to greet you every time you come in and out at night. You do have your electric assist seating options here for you to hit, especially that lower lumbar. I love the piping on the sides of the seat. A little bit of piping goes a very, very long way. I got plenty of room. I mean, if you need more room, I don't know, I guess go with an 18 wheeler or something, but plenty of room up here. Steering wheel, same thing. I'm digging the wood finish. It would be nice if it was an open pour wood, but I'm still liking it with the leather. The tan stitching brings the horn button alive. It really does, even with the older style buttons and switches. It's just that, yes, they're older, but they are easy to use. You do have electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and the steering wheel is heated. And then instrumentation. You have a very, very nice display, digital seven inches in the center, and then you're gonna get analog tack, analog speedometer, coolant, and fuel gauge. It's a far cry from what Cadillac is doing with their full digital displays, but if you like to have that old school feel when it comes to instrumentation, I dig it. I think the, the bigger problem and the bigger zonk is that there's no head up display and that would have been a nice extra touch. But why don't we get to that mid row because I'm dying to show you how much room there is in this QX80. All right guys, back seat time. And this mid row is out of control, not only with the size, but like I said, with the comfort and the storage, you got that captain's chair set up. And I'm so glad they didn't do the captain's chair's armrest. You got a solid armrest on top of this command center here in the center. Now, if you're wanting the latest and greatest in technology, Grand Wagoneer is really the way to go. You're gonna get over 70 inches of screen. What do we have in this vehicle? You do have monitors in the headrest, and obviously the headrest can lower very easily. Eight inch monitors, they are not touch screen. So you do get a remote um, to utilize them. I do like the way they're integrated into the headrest instead of just sticking out because look at the beautiful stitch work, even down to the pocket. And this pocket, you could easily put two of the crows that are flying around this vehicle right now on the set, movie set that we're at. So you could put two crows back there. Just make sure they're asleep because if their wings are flapping around, I don't know how successful that's gonna be. They may hurt you. But little command center at the back here. What I like about it is that you got your AC controls, heated seats, but no ventilated seats. And that's a zonk, should be ventilated seats, but you do have USB. And down below, you do have a home power source. Let me get this tab out of the way here. Home power source and a 12 volt. So they got you covered connectivity wise. And then what I do like is this, watch this. I want a Twinkie. See how easy that is? You ever get your kids are like, I want a snack up in the center console. Tell them to get their own freaking snack. Just hit the button, earn it, do it yourself. I have my own monitor here. I'm definitely gonna take three of those crows and put them in here, just stuff them in that pocket. And I do like, like I said, the nice soft armrest, just like up front. We lift it up, what do we got? You got your uh, headsets and the remote in there. You got a whole box of Twinkies that you could easily place in there. Watch this. You think it's a cup holder? Wrong, it's a Twinkie holder and I was actually able to fit three Twinkies in there. I challenge you to put four. Let's see if you could do it. Close that back up and then watch. You ready for this? Yes, the Twizzler holder, five pound bag. Put it in there and then the seats, soft as can be. They do recline, but they do not slide. So that is a little bit of a challenge with these, but they do recline and they actually recline pretty freaking far. And you got your AC vents up in the ceiling, right by the headliner here. But while we go ahead, let's get into that third row and see how comfortable it is compared to the Escalade in this QX80. All right, guys, back seat time, the third row. One thing I wanna show you is that there's no electric assist, but probably one of the fastest moving seats in the business. Are you ready? Count it down. Three, two, one, go. Look at that, right out of the way. And now we're gonna climb on in. Good luck to me. Squeezing back here. All right, let's talk about what we got going on here. There's room. My head is not touching the headliner. I'm six feet tall. 
My head is not touching the headliner. I do have AC vents back here, right by the top of the window. And I can, look at this is kind of nice. I can recline the third row. Not many brands do that. I could actually electrically uh, recline the third row. And I got a very nice high headrest. Looks like one of the droids from Attack of the Droids uh, with the Star Wars films. But the challenge is this right here. My knees are way too high. And with the Cadillac's new multi-link independent rear suspension, you don't run into this problem. Plus the other issue, there's no place for me to connect. So there's no USB, no USB-C. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the cargo area and see what we could stuff inside this QX80. All right guys, cargo area time. Hit the button, electric assist, rises up nicely. Obviously the Escalade's also gonna have an electric assist on the rear lift gate, but what do we have? You got about seven, almost 17 cubic feet of space with the third row up. On the driver's side, you do have a 12 volt, which is nice to see, especially for those uh, tailgate parties, especially for when you go to the beach. On the passenger side, we have the switch gear to electrically fold down the third row. So there's your third row. All you're gonna do is just one touch, one on each side, and then it's gonna be a race to see which side goes down first. So basically you're looking at almost 17 cubic feet of space with the seats up. You fold down the third row and the mid row, you're looking at 95.1 cubic feet of space. Now, not as great in size as the Escalade, but this does have a weight advantage. And I do like the fact that it's a nice one button assist. I think the one problem that we have looking at that third row, like I pointed out, no USBs but you do have the AC vents located up top. But you know what? It's about that time. Grab your third row passengers, your mid row passengers, and you're definitely gonna wanna grab me because I got the keys and we're going on throttle in our QX80. All right guys, we're in this 2022 Infinity QX80 sensory trim on throttle. Plenty of get up and go. You got that four by four system and you having some new technology in here really helps kind of change the overall effect of the driving experience. Getting to that new 12.3 inch infotainment system is well within reach. And then having the wireless Apple CarPlay, the wireless Android also, Auto also is a nice additional touch and that digital rear view mirror, super, super clean graphics. Making a U-turn in this super size SUV is actually real easy. I love the sound and the power of the naturally aspirated V8 and it really feels quick, quicker than the Escalade. Steering is light as well. So if you're somebody who doesn't want a very, very heavy steering wheel, this really feels good when you're making U-turns and when you're turning and whatnot. But let me come to a complete stop. Nobody is behind us, and we're gonna do another on-throttle acceleration. On-throttle, here we go. Nice smooth shifts from the seven speed. On the brakes. Feeling good into this right-hand bend. Look at that, just grips and grips. So you're gonna get that awesome four-wheel drive grip that you want. I like the two-tone style in here. It, obviously, it's not perfect. Obviously, there's some other upgrades, but it definitely is a, a move in the right direction, and I am excited for what the redesign QX80 is gonna bring to the table. You just gotta ask yourself, do you want that nameplate from Cadillac and the Escalade, or do you want more of a classic uh, Japanese luxury off-road off vehicle? Um, because this really does check off so many boxes. U-turn time. Nicely done. Oh, here we go. I do love the responsiveness of the engine. Really, really responsive. Same with the brakes. Visibility is wonderful in here. Seats are comfy and it, it just pulls so smoothly. All right, I wanna get out onto the highway and just show how smoothly this vehicle drives. 
They did a great job upgrading the sound deadening material, the thickness of the glass, and this is really where it's a pleasure to be behind the wheel of this QX80 because it is silky smooth, soaking up all the bumps, and these seats are just soaking up your stressful day, especially being ventilated here in hot, sunny Florida. But I would like a panoramic sunroof. I would like an updated steering wheel. I'm okay with the dash. I know everybody wants digital, so let me know what you think about the dash if you desire the full digital, but definitely a movement in the right direction. And as you can see, going over the expansion joints, those 22 inch wheels, not too much road noise, no wind noise really. And it just kind of glides down the highway. And the visibility you get from the curvy hood really helps with uh, your reference points in driving this vehicle. But hopefully it gave you a nice overall feel of what Infinity is bringing to the table for 2022 with the QX80. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split All right second. guys, it's been a great day here with this Infinity QX80. I definitely gotta thank Aileen, Kyle, and the rest of the Infinity crew for getting us access to this 2022 Infinity QX80. What do you think? Are you digging this, like I keep saying, that Japanese classic off-road style in a luxury wrapper compared to the Escalade? Let me know which way you're gonna go. Are you ready for a redesign with this thing? Put it in the comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rides merch. Got to give it up to the queen of the camera. She's four by four, working that camera like a champ. Show us some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.